Hello, FBC family. Today is the National Day of Prayer. It's the first Thursday of May each year. And we want to take a moment to uh, to spend a few moments in prayer together. We want to lead you kind of through a season of prayer together as a church family. I do want to point you to a video that we filmed a few weeks ago. Uh, Luke did a nice job of explaining the logistics behind our Maundy Thursday drive through prayer. We're going to pray again on Mother's Day this coming Sunday evening from 6 to 7.30 p.m. I would refer you back to that video that Pastor Luke did uh, about the logistics of how we're going to do that again. Uh, but I encourage you to be a part of that with us this coming Sunday, uh, May the 10th. But today, we want to turn your attention to a few, a few passages of Scripture and just lead us together in a season of prayer, I encourage you to pause this video and pray on your own and then continue it into the next season. So, so join us today on this National Day of Prayer as we worship the Lord together in His Word and in prayer. I want to begin our attention uh, to Psalm 33. Listen to these words. The Lord looks down from heaven he observes everyone. He gazes on all the inhabitants of the earth from his dwelling place. He forms the hearts of them all. He considers all their works. A king is not saved by a large army. A warrior will not be rescued by great strength. The horse is a false hope for safety. It provides no escape for it, uh, by its great power. But look, the Lord keeps his eye on those who fear him those who depend on his faithful love to rescue him from death and to keep them alive in famine. We wait for the Lord. He is our help and shield for our hearts rejoice in him because we trust in his holy name. May your faithful love rest on us, Lord, for we put our hope in you. Let that be our prayer today. Let's pray together. Almighty God, you are a high and a holy God. We are unworthy to even speak your name. We're unworthy to have a relationship with you. We're unworthy to cry out to you in prayer. We are an unholy people, and you are a holy and mighty and all-powerful and perfect God. Because of the work of Jesus on the cross, Hebrews tells us we can freely approach your throne of grace. And we thank you for allowing us to have a personal relationship with you at all. God, I pray that we would recognize today our own unworthiness. I pray that you would fill our hearts with contrition and repentance. God, I pray that we would take a few moments even now in this video to exercise repentance and to reflect on how unworthy we are. God, move in our hearts and still our minds so that we can draw closer unto you. Lord, I pray that we would lift high the name of the Lord Jesus. I pray that we would begin to wrap our minds around who you are and what you've done. Lord, you have the hairs of our head numbered and you care about us very much. And you are a God that is near to us. Scripture teaches us you are near to the brokenhearted. You care about us very much. You know us and you love us intimately. And we thank you for being the God of our salvation. But Lord, even larger and bigger and grander than that, you also have the stars of the universe numbered. You are our creator you are a big God. You are very far away at the same time that you are very near to us. You are a big God. And I pray that we would recognize how, how different you are from, from creation. You are a holy God. You are a mighty and a powerful God. Lord, you, you can't be in the presence of sin. You are our maker and you are our sustainer. Lord, I pray that we would, um, we would just lift high your holy name today. Lord, thank you for your word that teaches us about who you are. Thank you for giving us this precious book 
that even the, even the Apostle John tells us is like baby talk. You, you condescend and you lower yourself so that we can at least begin to understand who you are. Lord, thank you for speaking to us through it. Psalm 31 teaches us that you are our protector. You are a rock of refuge for me, a mountain fortress to save me. You are my rock and my fortress. You lead and guide me for your name's sake. On this national day of prayer, we recognize that you are a rock and a fortress for us as individuals. You are a rock and a fortress for us as your church. And you are also a rock and a fortress for us as a nation if if we are willing to seek you as such. Lord, I pray that we as a church We as a people will bend our knees in repentance, recognizing who you are, worshiping you as such, and walking in obedience to your word. Lord, I pray that our nation would return to you, acknowledge you as our Lord and Savior, walk in obedience to your word. And God, I pray that you would bless our country during this difficult season that you would protect us and guide us. But we know that that first comes with repentance and submission. Lord, I pray that we as the church, we as individuals, we as a nation would turn to you as our source of protection and comfort because you are a great and mighty God. You are worthy of our obedience and our lives and our hearts. You are worthy of our reverence and fear. Lord, I pray that you would move in a mighty way in our hearts today, even as we draw near to you in prayer. I ask these things in the strong, saving name of the Christ, the Son of the living God, Jesus. Amen. Thanks, AJ, and... uh... And during my time, during our prayer, uh, I would like to pray on behalf for intercessory prayer. And I want to direct you to uh, probably one of the most significant passages in the Bible on intercessory prayer. It's in 1 Timothy chapter 2, and the Apostle Paul writes to his protege, Timothy, and he says, First of all, then, I urge that petitions, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for everyone, for kings and all those who are in authority so that we may lead a tranquil and quiet life in all godliness and dignity. This is good, and it pleases God our Savior, who wants everyone to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, during this National Day of Prayer that we should pray for our national leaders and pray uh, for our state and local leaders, and we should also pray personally. Church, I encourage you to pray for those that you know that are lost and need the gospel. Mm-hmm. And what a great prayer. We often pray for sick people, and we know that if believers are sick, then then their eternal salvation is not in question. But there are many people that you know that, that aren't that that aren't saved, who don't know Christ. And so it's a matter of urgency. So I urge you to put names on your heart and pray for them every day. Let's pray together as a mm-hmm. church. Father, we thank you that we can come to your throne today and that we can come boldly and come confidently because of what Christ has done. Yes, We're grateful Lord. for that. And I pray that you'll hear our prayers and that you and your perfect will will answer them in the way that you see fit. God, we love you and we give you thanks for what you've done. We pray on behalf of our leaders, our national leaders. We pray that you give them wisdom during this difficult time of crisis in our country. We pray that you give them wisdom and discernment. You give them good decision-making skills and God that you design and guide their decisions that they'll fit with your will for our nation. Mm -hmm. We pray for our state and local leaders also, Lord. They're under great duress as well and we we lift them up, give them courage and give them strength and give them wisdom as well as they make decisions. Mm -hmm. We pray for our community, our local leaders as they do the same thing in difficult times and often with strained resources. 
Lord, we pray that you encourage them and strengthen them to make godly decisions. Lord, I pray for our community in general, and there are many hurting people in this community, and we pray for them. We lift them up to you. Lord, I pray as a church that we'll be sensitive to them, that you'll guide us, that you'll use us in this time to be a ministry to other people in our community, Mm -hmm. that we won't just be concentrating and worried on ourselves, but you'll open each of us, our hearts and our minds, to people that have needs around us. And we thank you in advance for what you will do. Lord, I pray for our families and our church, and many people are in difficult times. There's several in our families and in our community that are suffering grief during this time or going through significant hospital experiences, and we pray for them. We pray for healing if it's appropriate, and we ask that you do that. But, Lord, we pray for your strength and comfort to each home. We pray that you'll minister to these people that we love and care for in a special way that only you can do. Mm -hmm. And Lord, we pray that during this time that the gospel can go forth from our church and from the voices and the homes of our people that they can proclaim that your son Jesus is Savior of the world. We thank you for the great message that you've given us. We thank you for the power that we have in the Holy Spirit. And we pray that you'll use this time to grow your kingdom. And Lord, we look forward to gathering again together. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Well, then, as I close our time of prayer, I would invite you all to pray a similar prayer with me, but I want to warn you, my uh, prayer portion is a rather dangerous one for you to ask of God. You see, I would like to spend some time praying that we would be hands and feet of Jesus, that we would be excited about the, the opportunity that are presented in a time that is full of anxiety, that is full of hardship, that is full of difficulty, that we'd be excited about that time because it means we have more opportunities to love on others, Mm -hmm. to serve others. And uh, the verse, the passage that comes to mind when I think of how do we ask God about this is right before the Last Supper, as Jesus is spending some of his last moments with his disciples, um, Jesus says to them, The Son of Man is glorified, and God is glorified in him. If God is glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. And this is in chapter 13. This is verse 33. Children, I am with you a little while longer. You will look for me just as I have told Juice, and I will tell you where I am going. You cannot come. And this is what's so important. He says, I give you a new command. Verse 34. Love one another Mm -hmm. just as I have loved you. You are also to love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. Mm. In this time, it is so important that, and I think we've done really well as a church about this, that we love and support one another. We rally around anybody that we know to be hurting, that we think might be in difficulty, that we think might need extra help during this time. I think as a church, we've done so well, and we've been encouraged to hear folks that have done that as a church. But then to ask the question, why do we do that? Is it just so we can take care of ourselves, so we can be a cool little club? Well, it's, it's so that people would know God's love, that we would be a, vi- a visible representation of how God loves us by how we're able to love one another. So my prayer is going to be threefold. I'm gonna pray that God give, give us opportunities to love others. Mm-hmm. God give us the awareness to see those opportunities when they come and the boldness to take those opportunities when they come. So I would challenge y'all to say this prayer with me. So if y'all would pray with me. Dear Holy Father, it is so incredible that we get to come to you in prayer. God, it's so incredible that we get to take our needs, our desires, and our hopes before you. And so God, right now, we want to pray. We want to ask something that we, we fully expect you to honor. God, we want to ask for your help, for opportunities to, to love others. God, we want to look for ways that we can be outpouring of your love for us Mm -hmm. into the lives of other people, other people who don't know you, other people who haven't experienced what it means to be loved by God, other people who don't know the sense of belonging that we have, the sense of fulfillment that we have in you. God, I pray that we find opportunities to love others. Mm -hmm. It might be through service. It might be through compassion and might be through a relationship that we already have, a friendship that we already have. God, I pray that you provide opportunities for us to be the church, 
and to love others who don't know you. God, I pray that as these opportunities come, God, I pray that you give us awareness to see it. I pray that as we go about our day, God, as we are pumping gas, as we're in the grocery store, as we're scrolling through social media on our phones, God, that you put names on our heart, you put people on our heart to say, I could ask this this person right here across the pump for me how they're doing. I could send a text message right now to somebody who I know might be worried about where their next meal is going to come from. God, I pray that we are aware of the opportunities that you give us. That we don't look at the end of our day and say, ah, there are so many chances I could have told somebody about you. But God, that we see those opportunities right before us. And then God, so important, give us the boldness to take those opportunities to make the most of the moments that you give us. Mm -hmm. That we not be content to say, well, I'll get them next time, or oh God, I I really missed it there. But to say, God, give me courage for five seconds to start this conversation. God, I've asked for the opportunity. I see the moment here. God, give me the strength and the courage to ask somebody how they're doing, to offer to help somebody, to pour out the love that I have from you into their lives. And God, we know that if we are faithful to follow you, God, you are faithful to be God, Mm -hmm. to work for us, to work through all things for for the good of those who love you. So God, we pray all these things in your son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for praying, church. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. And be gracious unto you. May the Lord look with favor on you and give you peace. And all God's church said, Amen. Amen.